I'm Ellie from Magic Beans, and in this video, you are in for a giant treat. We have Mia, our director of stores, who is going to take you through so many ages and stages from newborn all the way up through older kids. So we're organizing this video by chapter, depending on the age of your child. We have newborn, six to 12, one to three, three to five, five to seven, and seven plus. We'll put a link to the chapters in the description below so you can go directly to the toys that you are interested in. And we have the best baby store and the best toy store for all ages, magicbeans at mbeans.com, where we offer free shipping over $99 and free gift wrap, which is super, super cool. So we're going to start our video with best toys for newborns. Okay guys, so we are looking at some great newborn ready toys available here at Magic Beans. Now there's a lot of fine motor and social development and cognitive development that starts with play. In fact, play is really the backbone of a lot of the growth a child's gonna experience as they learn new things. Yes, you can play with a newborn. Um, it's important to note for the first three months of life, your child's play has a lot to do with them just exploring their physical body. But during that stage, as parents, we can interact with our little ones with things that have visual cues or audio cues. Obviously, we're looking at this adorable little rattle here by Janode. Now, a little human being can't clasp onto a rattle until they're between three and five months of age, but this gives us an opportunity to start to engage and stimulate with our little human being as they're looking around, trying to zero in on things visually and from an auditory standpoint. Um, this is also just really adorable and has a mirror on the back. Um, anything that sort of gives a parent an opportunity to engage a sensory aspect of your child's development in those first three months where most of the play is unoccupied and just happening with their body, um, something like that is great in that circumstance. We're also big on newborn ready toys that are gonna feature high color contrast. Um, so here we're looking at baby paper. I'll talk about this a little bit more in a moment. And this organic farm buddy, we see high color contrast between the black and white and that really helps to zero in on their visual development. Um, they are not seeing the full spectrum of colors when they first arrive into the world. So anything that creates a really high contrast helps them to zero in, it helps them to learn to focus. Baby paper is the best less than $10 you're ever going to spend to gift to a brand new family. Um, this can be clutched by a brand new baby uh, incidentally, as they're just kind of reaching for things, but then as they, between three and five months, can more deliberately reach out for things, there's something incredibly satisfying about the manner in which this crinkles. I am an adult who really does enjoy engaging with this. Um, anything that is silicone um, or crinkly is going to be another great option for that newborn ready staging. We're talking about things that are safe for a baby who's approaching teething to put into their mouth. And again, to create kind of a cause and effect sort of incidentally the way we get with that baby paper. Um, this is adorable by Takiri. It's a newborn ready dragon and it's tough to see in the box, but the wings are crinkle paper. So we're getting a multifaceted toy there. Now, again, at three months, things start to be a little bit more deliberate. And that's where I start to like to introduce soft books. Soft books are going to be in this kind of similar vein of crinkly paper or things that provide a really bright and vivid image for your little one to rain in on. This is my Manhattan toy. Manhattan toy is one of my favorite brands. Um, as far as our newborn ready things are concerned, they'll have some of their classics um, that are really easy for a baby to reach onto that will jingle or jangle or even um, just kind of move around in a way that's stimulating. Um, but soft books are similar to books going to have different pages with lots of things to interact on, most of which we can, again, from like three to five months, clasp onto, make it make a sense, or uh, create some sort of sensory response, but no sort of sharp corners, because obviously our movements in the first six months of our life, they're not deliberate. So things that are soft um, and not going to create any hazards as a child sort of willy-nilly reaching for things um, are great things to have into your assortment. I always wanna circle back to all toys and all play is sort of educational, especially in these early stages when we get to introduce things to brand new babies who haven't seen them otherwise. Also by Manhattan Toy, um, this is a cactus stacker. We've got a slight magnetic pull 
Now, you're going to see in the physical growth and development of a tiny human, um, as they get closer to six months, they become a bit sturdier at their core and they're more capable of sitting up on their own. Um, again, at the risk of being redundant, that aligns with their ability to reach out and clasp for things. All soft corners here, visually stimulating and interchangeable. So we get a lot of opportunity to explore this toy in a variety of different ways. Um, I'm a huge fan of if we can add something to your assortment without cluttering your living room in these early stages, that does more than one thing. So at six months, we'll get some sensory engagement with this, um, visually stimulating and just really easy to kind of interact with. Um, stroller toys and things that you can affix to the handlebar or the belly bar of your stroller. These are huge in the first toy market. You're going to see a million different options. This is a bandana buddy by Skip Hop. Skip Hop's one of our best partners when it comes to early um, exploration in toys. They do great activity gyms, um, tons of sensory based things. This is the most ridiculously cute giraffe I've ever seen and they all have a bandana in this line. Um, once again, things that are going to be easy to clutch. If we're looking at the leaf that's attached here, we have great opportunity to kind of explore the different sensory things that are happening. And because the older your child gets, the more likely they are to enjoy throwing things off of the size of the stroller, we can toggle that to the belly bar and have it safe for our journey. Um, and lastly, at around six months, the ability to start to engage in sensory things really comes to a peak. And remember, we're sitting up on our own. Hoppe makes a number of great music-focused toys that you can start to introduce as early as six months. Now, this is one of our all-time uh, favorites here. It's a rotating music box. Because it's going to spin and move around, as your little one at six months is sort of learning to sit up and interact, we're also getting great sensory development. And the manner in which this kind of travels around in front of them um, at a time where children are mainly doing most of their play on their own continues to be mentally stimulating. Lastly, this adorable little panda is by Cloud B. Now you can introduce this from birth on. This is considered a soother, but also repurposes as a play device. We get a similar concept without the sound when we look at things like organic farm buddies or loveys. Um, we definitely, with this regard, have eight different sounds that will come up, but it's soft and plush and easy for a brand new child to find soothing or at least interact with it um, in a way that's not at all disruptive to their day, like, to their day, excuse me. I managed to forget that on the table were two of my favorite newborn items to include into a gift. These are indestructibles. Again, keep in mind, you're probably at around that three to five month window when a child can start to reach out to things flush that out a bit further to when they're more confidently sitting on their own. Indestructibles are books, but they're made from a paper that is not going to be ripped away at because children up until three um, really get to know whether they like something by putting it into their mouth. So these will not be damaged as a result. And a parent can interact. Again, we talk about in those first six months, a lot of the play is going to welcome a parent to interact with their child to improve the experience. Um, these are great opportunities to have your child have a manipulative they can explore. They pack down right, no harm, no foul, putting this in a diaper bag or a purse and knowing that you can read, but they can also just engage with the images that are on the paper. There's a really broad variety of different titles um, in this line. They'll have seasonal options, um, but this is a great starter set to get you going for your first six months of play. Okay, the next category is toys for six months to 12 months old. Just so you know, we have links to our shop by age in the description below, and every toy that you see in this video is available to buy from us from Magic Beans. Here are toys for six to 12 months old. Um, an important thing to note about really the first two years of play for your little one is that most of it is done on their own by themselves. It's referred to the solitary play stage. So what you're gonna see in a lot of toys that go from birth to about two years of age is lots of opportunity to explore the toy in a variety of ways because your child will be interacting with that toy or with that manipulative um, without intervention from other children. Um, again, at six months, we are approaching sitting up on our own, and that's when we get into some of the cooler sort of stacking and shape sorting toys. Um, 
what we're looking for with stacking toys is that a child could be sitting on their own and reaching and grabbing things deliberately. We get a good amount of hand-eye to hand-eye coordination um, start to show at this stage. Um, so we're looking at the green toys shape sorting train, and this item hits on a lot of different milestones that children explore between six and 12 months. It's worth noting that Green Toys is a US-based brand. They make their products from 100% recyclable materials. So if sustainability is important to you, this is definitely a brand that should be on your radar. Now, bearing in mind that at six months, children are getting used to sitting up on their own, the process of stacking a toy helps to engage our reaching and it helps to sort of teach your child how to grow into their body. Our big muscles are developing and we start to realize when we're going off of balance. Reaching for and stacking toys is a great way to explore that just in the process of playing. We also get to rein in on things like color and shape and figuring out how things work together. Um, we'll see that kind of concept of things working together and a lot of toys that hit on this sort of six to 12 month milestone. So we can reach and hold on to our things and we're starting to explore how pieces fit together. Great opportunity to start to explore color and shape and to be cueing to that verbally as your little one is again engaged in solitary play. This is the Innie Bin from Fat Brain Toys. In a moment, we're gonna look at the Fat Brain Toys Dimple, which is one of our most popular toys in this sort of six to 12 month range. What we love about the Innie Bin here is this is a more sort of unique take on traditional shape sorting. Traditional shape sorting is going to give us a triangular based toy and a slot to put it in that fits specifically to that one-to-one -one connection. What's great about the Innie Bin is that you can kind of grow into this toy without frustration, which is going to allow a child to continue to explore and to continue to play because obviously our separations here can be made as generous as we need them to. And if you're picking up on a theme, you'll notice a lot of these toys have a pretty substantial presence and can sit on their own without being toppled over. Because again, we're trying to hit on at around this age, we're stabilizing our core, we're reaching out for things, we're making connections between our hand and eye coordination, and it helps if everything is kind of sitting directly before us in that circumstance. On that same idea is the Marius Pyramid by Genode. Once again, we're looking at a fixture that has a ton of different opportunities to engage, including taking out these rattlers and fitting them back inside their home. Um, also from Fat Brain Toys, these are the Umi Balls, which are able to separate into different compartments so we can nest things into one another. But as we're exploring our visual development and how things work together, we're able to sort of take our hands and explore the different divots easy to clutch. It's important that toys are easy to clutch at six months and as we grow into 12 months because our motions are going to go from becoming sort of happenstance to more deliberate. There's going to be a jump at around nine months. We are getting more confident as movers and sitter uppers. Um, we're starting to explore crawling more, holding ourselves up, and what's a really great segue there for play and development is things that go. So we were already looking at the green toys train. Here's another example of a great product from the brand that's one year friendly. This is their flat bed and truck. And here we're checking out the Plan Toys Room Bus. Um, things that go are going to be big in some of our subsequent play stages, thinking about trains and trucks as we get between two and three. This room bus is perfectly appropriate for a tiny little 12 month hand to learn the relation between cause and effect and to continue to refine our fine motors. We hold on to it, we can move it as it goes. It's simple in its shape, but Plan Toys is another fantastic brand to have on your radar. If the ethos, excuse me, of a company is important to you, um, they make their products highly sustainable by milling down discarded wood scraps to create their plan wood. Um, we'll definitely be looking at other plan toys options um, as we continue down over our course today. 
Revisiting the idea of stacking, this is the Bunny Stacker by Hoppe. And once again, stacking toys are important because children are growing into their physical development between six and 12 months. So sitting down, engaging their core, reaching for things and trying to stack them on top of each other helps to do not only the physical development, but the hand-eye coordination. And we're starting to, uh, to infer, if I reach for this, and it's bigger than what's beneath it, it will topple over. So we're starting to dip our toe in the pool of the cognitive development of play. Um, hitting on one of our best toys. This is the dimple. You may be familiar with fat brain toys. Children in this age range start to refine their pincher fine movement, meaning that they like to push things down. Fat Brain Toys has this in a really ergonomic shape that little hands can hold on to close to their chest orally explore, which is going to be an inevitability at this age range, but start to enjoy the sort of open-ended, sort of fidgeting end of play, which has become a big sort of focus on play and development in the wake of the pandemic, folks being home more, looking for things to soothe ourselves, open-ended play here. At the risk of being redundant, we want to bear in mind that most of six to 12 month play is between a child and an object. We're going to be looking at that up until about two years of age. So we're looking for objects that have lots of opportunity for engagement in development um, and to keep your child busy. Similarly minded, this Baba Boo um, bead maze, you've seen these in your pediatrician's office. I think anyone who is in their 30s or 40s can even remember what was in their pediatrician's office. This is on a bit of an unstable base. So it will rock back and forth or side to side. And then as we're developing this kind of pinching fine motor, we can take the beads and travel them all around. It's fun to sort of get them to the top and to watch them either plummet right down to the ground or go in the inverse and then watch them move around. Um, definitely sort of just getting used to cause and effect. How does what my action do, do or excuse me, how does my action um, create a response as I'm exploring play. Next up are toys for toddlers from one years old to three years old. All play is exciting, but this is when toys start to get really, really cool um, in terms of a parent sort of really enjoying the process of engaging with their little one while they play. A couple of milestones are happening here. Obviously, your little one is a much more confident, confident mover and shaker once we hit 18 months as we go into three years of age. So lots of toys are going to be in line with that sort of boosted confidence um, as they're more you know, comfortable walking around and, and holding their body weight. Um, we also see a cognitive leap here um, where children sort of when they hit two, start to observe other folks playing and approach interacting with the toys. We have a great representation here of some of the major categories of toys in this range. We'll start um, just with what's closest to me. Uh, with the bubbles that we're looking at here. Obviously, we're looking to get in and out of the house once the weather is nice, but you can play with bubbles all year round. Blowing bubbles may seem like a really simple notion, but if we start with like an 18 month child, it's going to help them with visually tracking the bubbles as they go. Um, this is a great opportunity to talk about how at this milestone, we learn about the consequences of our actions for the first time. What is more indicative of that than popping a bubble and then running around and popping a million more bubbles? Similarly, uh, conceptually, we could look over at this awesome Lollaboom set or even Duplo, which I have hiding here in the back. Um, Duplo is going to be a great opportunity for us to get used to stacking things together and building them up and high. And once again, refining our ability to make connections between our actions and consequences. So if I build this all the way up high, will it topple over? Or as an 18 month to three year old child, I can kind of clearly look at the different variety of pieces and try to determine the manner in which they go together. Um, if you're watching this and you are a Lego adult, right? We talk about different types of toy-based adults and you're still playing with Lego, then you would know from experience that getting into that at an early age really helps with subsequent spatial awareness and kind of logic-based play. And that can be introduced as early as 18 months. Now, I love toys that are going to give us some longevity. It helps to keep your living room not as overrun. Um, this Lollaboom set can start as early as 10 months with the basic connection 
connection making of these pieces. Now, bearing in mind that under three, things are going to be robust enough or big enough to not provide a choking risk because children are still actively exploring their toys by putting them into their mouths. So how do we make a toy like this go from that early stage and to continue to be adaptive as a child grows, there's different ways to interact with the manipulatives, whether it's basically connecting them together or lacing them together. We've got great and unique shapes. And if you really pan in closely, you'll see that there's also going to be sort of dimples to the edges. So as we're still at 18 months, doing some of that sensory fidgety exploring, that's gonna hit on that really well. In our previous chapter, we looked at the smaller version of the dimple as our children were refining their push down pincher motion. Um, but sometimes play is still, again, really open ended um, as we go through these different milestones. And this is just the broader version and the deluxe version, which is going to allow a child to kind of sit with this. I love this for planes. Um, I love this for sort of sitting in a restaurant, something you can just pop in and continue to be engaged with by your little one um, as you're journeying around. Other things happen in these milestones. Um, mainly as we've eclipsed two and we're approaching three, children start to want to mirror the things that they're seeing their parents do um, on a daily basis. So whether that's cleaning around the house or cooking or talking on the phone, children start to mirror and reflect that. We've got a couple of great examples of toys that will pick up on that here. Um, we previously talked about planned toys. This is their wonky fruit and vegetables. So obviously it's resembling of what they have at home or what they're seeing as their parents are cooking or preparing meal time. We also get great coordination and fine motor skill development with this toy um, because we're going to use the wooden toy knife that's included to separate the pieces. There's a bit of a Velcro connection between the two. So we also get to build connections as we put them back together. Now we will start to explore, don't wanna to topple everything over, playing with dolls as early as 18 months. Um, I am totally open to own up to the fact that I don't think doll play should be considered a strictly gendered thing. Playing with dolls at an early age will once again reinforce that kind of mirroring that we're doing at home. It helps with our development of empathy. It helps with our social development. Corolla has been around for ages. Their dolls come in a variety of diverse options so that children can explore beyond what is familiar to them. Um, there are going to be feeding play sets that are um, extensions here, potty training things that are extensions here but dolls should be introduced as early as 18 months, once again, to kind of have some of those empathy riddled um, social developments. We um, were talking about mirroring what's going on at home. Um, the Italian in me loves this Haba set. It's a pasta bucket, pa uh, pasta pan with all of the accoutrement. They're felt based, they're easy to hold, they won't present choking risks. And once again, it gives a child between 18 months and three, the opportunity to mirror what they're viewing their parents doing um, at home. We also get to start to explore arts and crafts, which are going to be big sections of toys and exploration as your child grows. What's important about first stage crafting um, toys is that they are easy for a child to grasp. We do not want to frustrate a child by handing them manipulatives that are just not in line with their fine motor development. We know how tempting it is um, to want to age up on toys and in some circumstances it's completely okay. Um, in others we want to fight the urge. So children who are as young as three, they're getting used to really holding on to and deliberately you know, coloring and drawing things. Um, this actually, just to backpedal a little, this is by Jekko. Um, this is a similar concept to what I'm holding here. We'll talk about the do a dots in a mo dot to dots in a moment. Um, blank canvases uh, that we have on these sort of predetermined templates that are included. So we're giving a child a really clear and um, obvious area in which they can start to stamp down with these sort of bingo kind of marker coloring manipulatives. Um, this is a great way to occupy some time, whether you're sitting your little one, you know, in their high chair ahead of mealtime and just trying to kind of get maybe a load of laundry done or dishes done to have them situated with something that they can hold on to. Um, Dua dots are one of our most popular, if not our most popular craft based or coloring based options for children who are in that sort of around three age range. Once again, these early sort of 
art-based explorations should be easy for a child to clutch. They're not quite comfortable holding things with that real point down um, pincher sort of fine motor. So giving them something that they can independently hold on to as they're exploring helps to boost their confidence. And I think it's really important um, sort of once again, and forgive me for rambling, um, that we're giving toys that help to line up with what they're exploring developmentally. Um, I'm not sure if I've missed anything, I did. We've got puzzles, and yes, children as early as two years of age can start to explore puzzles. Now our really early puzzles are typically going to include very big, chunky wooden pieces that are clearly bigger um, and more obvious in their shape than their receiving portion on the puzzle. The goal there is for a child as early as 18 months to use their shape recognition skills to draw the connection. Um, this is by Janode. We've looked at a few other things by Janode in a moment. We're gonna get to a toy that I'm positively obsessed with, but they really have a knack for these, you know, almost whimsical and very cute characters um, that again are gonna be visually engaging. So 18 months puzzles are again gonna have multi-dimensional, really big pieces that you almost can't get incorrect. And then as your little one goes to puzzles that have more traditionally shaped pieces, excuse me, just a moment. Um, typically we're looking at just two pieces. So a two-year-old puzzle, you're going to find two very obvious and big puzzle pieces that work together that are more in that kind of similar dimension to the puzzle pieces that we'll work on um, as adults. Um, Crocodile Creek makes a million fantastic puzzles. We're lucky to have a ton of them here in our assortment at Magic Beans. At three, as children have now branched out into playing together and cooperative play, giant floor puzzles are a great way for a family to get together, put the pieces together, because there are more, right? So we've got 36 pieces here. In order to not frustrate a child who's exploring that quantity of pieces, typically they're bigger, we encourage you to do them as a family the first few times, and then your little one will very confidently explore them on their own moving forward. Um, and then also important to note, before I topple everything to the ground, your little one at 12 months is a more confident sitter at 18 months, even more so. So tub time gets to be more play focused. This is a musical whale fountain. We've talked a lot about learning at this stage between cause and effect and what the consequences of your actions are. Um, this is a fabulous toy, primary colors, and it will actually when on um, play music and then shoot out of the spout water, which is ridiculous and silly, but also great for learning cause and effect. So as I mentioned, we're talking about much more confident walkers and movers between 18 months and three years of age, and a big trend in toys around that sort of demographic is going to be pull toys, things that a child, as they're confidently moving around their house, can pull behind them. We'll also see a big trend towards push toys. Now bear in mind, on the pull toys, a child can explore it at any time. Push toys, please wait till your little one is a really confident mover. Um, this adorable turtle is by Janode. It's a pull toy. There's so much to love about this toy, and if you're looking for a great gift for a child around this age, let's say someone turning two, um, this is a total home run. So to start, as we're just physically exploring toys, the head of the turtle is on a sort of coil that allows it to move all around. We have the benefits of pulling it, but it separates from that purpose and then becomes a really handy toy just to sort of shape and stack and learn about consequences as we build things up see how they work together. Um, I also think Janode kind of does no wrong when it comes to their color palette. Obviously, this is a really great looking toy, but again, hitting on our interest in pulling toys behind us and shape sorting. I hope you've been enjoying Mia. Isn't she amazing? Hope you've been enjoying this video of the best toys of 2022. Remember, we have links to our website, mbeans.com, where so many of the toys are available to buy from us, and we ship all over the country nationwide, and if you use our live chat or email us, we will give you great recommendations for all the toys that you need for you and for your growing family. Here are some amazing toys for three-year-olds to five-year-olds. So we're talking toys from ages three to five. Now a big milestone happens around this time where we really get into cooperative play or playing with other people as opposed to just watching someone play nearby. We have a great selection of some, you know, tried and true options for this age range and then some new things. Now, ages three and up is when we really see an interest in trains 
and in trucks um, start to come to the surface. That's not to imply that a child can't explore trains or trucks prior to that milestone, but the sort of vocabulary that we cue as we're exploring things that we see, you know, especially with trucks, which we'll talk about in a moment, it just kind of hits its sort of pivotal peak here. Uh, we're looking at a set from Brio. Brio has been around in doing this for 130 years, and the best part about it is that families will regularly come in who have all of the Brio tracks from their child that they plan to repurpose with their grandchild. Um, Brio is one of our sort of top tier brands here when it comes to trains and play, and we get a lot um, in terms of moving things around, seeing how connections are made on the tracks and exploring that, how they work together. Uh, again, vocabulary is going to be something that we're doing a lot of engaging with between this milestone, less so um, than we would have prior to ages three and five. This is the Bruder cement truck. Bruder, Bruder is another really tried and true brand. They make their trucks as close a facsimile as what your child is going to see out in the world. And uh, there's a real benefit to that because there's some familiarity. We can talk about our day and when we saw or where we saw and explore that with our child. The cement mixer is one of our most popular items and obviously very real life. We're not gonna introduce most brooder until at least three because there's gonna be functional things and pieces that we want a child to be really confident interacting with. And we also have small enough pieces to make sure that those can't break off or run into any risk of a child putting them into their mouth. Um, but all of their assortment is really real life, so there's great opportunities to draw connections between our play and what we see uh, when we're out and about. Again, kind of um, not to say that toys and trucks, or trains and trucks, excuse me, should be considered a gendered thing. I'm gonna strongly encourage you to introduce trains and trucks just as likely or just as equally to little girls as we would to little boys because there's great social benefits to kind of exploring those parallels between um, our worlds. As I mentioned, we're doing more cooperative play sort of once we kind of approach between three and four. So you'll see a lot of games become more broadly available that would involve you interacting with another member to achieve a goal or to work as a family. I wanted to take a moment to talk about Ibu games. There's a really broad variety. This has been one of my mainstay favorites here, and I've been with Magic Beans for five years at this time. Now this is a matching game, so we've got a three-year-old recommendation to start, and that will of course go up from there. What's so fantastic about this game, compared to just any other standard matching game, is that we're giving children a representation of cultures beyond their own, people who live in different parts of the world who may look just like they do, who they have yet to meet. Obviously, matching games um, are gonna give us an opportunity to sort of either play as a family or you can sit adjacent to your child while they're exploring it. Um, this is Picnic Panic. Um, this is an ages four and up cooperative game that helps to teach children about belonging, teamwork, achieving a mission, Games in general, a uh, big part of play between three and five, bearing in mind again that at around four, children start to sort of grow out of playing independently and start to play with people around their same age. Um, things that are also going to continue to grow in terms of our interest when we're between ages three and five have a lot to do with how play fosters our creativity. So imagination play dress up. Um, we have a great example here of an awesome set from Plan Toys. This is a dentist set. They have a hairdresser set. They have a detective set. Allowing our child to kind of take on a persona and explore what that would mean to them, whether it's through dress up or just role playing, helps to again take their creativity and really blow it up and help them to, to explore it further. Um, so as I mentioned, Plan Toys um, in an earlier video, really incredible partner. Their stuff is incredibly sustainably made. So if that's an important aspect of your shopping um, as a parent, knowing the quality of the materials, they're fantastic in that regard. Um, this is a sort of one-two punch, ages five and up set that's going to once again pull from some of the creative advantages and the cognitive growth as we explore our creativity. But this is also an awesome basic entry-level crafting set. We're gonna get to decorate the um, sort of dragon wings uh, and to have that sort of be tailored to our taste, but then also to explore being that character. What would that mean? We also will continue to pick up on play food, 
uh, things that will help us to mirror and um, sort of copy from the social cues that our parents are doing or our caretakers are doing on a daily basis. Um, this is called the Toasty Turtle, whimsical and ridiculous from Manhattan toy, but obviously incorporates some play food to continue with that kind of creative end of imagination play that we really see start to peak at, you know, sort of between ages three and five years of age. Let's talk about the Tony box. I hope that this has been on your radar before is one of my absolute favorite items here at Magic Beans. The Tony Box fosters independent play. It is an audio device that will either play music or tell stories or can interact with your child um, by allowing them to have control for how their speaker will work. It's a German toy. It's been in the US for a couple of years now. When we start with our Tony set, um, we'll get one figurine that we can place on top that will either tell our child stories or they will sing them songs. There is a really broad variety of different options with whether your child has sort of a favorite Disney character um, or your child's older, there are National Geographic options. Our goal here, this is gonna start at three, is to foster independent play. So when you gift a Tony box and you give a child a variety of figurines, they're able to sit in their space, which is also an important sort of development thing that happens in that range that we like our time and our space to ourselves and to interact with the different manipulatives as we explore a variety of content. My favorite part about a Tony box is that there is an option called a Creative Tony, which is a generic figurine that you and your family can upload content to. So if you are in one part of the world, but your family is in another, whether it was for work or school or what have you, you're able to reinforce that connection by perhaps having the grandparents upload content that will then read to your child. Um, this is a fabulous holiday gift. I'm also obsessed with this birthday gifts. Backing um, us more in the direction of what we were talking about just before the Tony box, which is um, creative and imagination placed based play between ages three and five. Floss and Rock has a number of fantastic sort of themed sets, um, some of which have these sort of magnetic backdrops that you can move the different sort of figurines through. Um, so this is a dinosaur set. They have like half a dozen different options between ages three and five. We're also flushing out our communication. And so as we're doing creative and imagination based play and role play, children are exploring their vocabulary. And it also kind of comes around full circle in mirroring some of the images or some of these sort of things that they hear on a daily basis. All of it helps with their social development. Um, I also appreciate that they have a tin based version of this with a bunch of different games. So if you have a flight coming up and you knew you needed something that was small and compact, definitely a home run there. We'll get some great musical based toys as early as three that are in line with sort of taking that to the next level along with Hey Clay. Um, and this awesome four-in-one tabletop easel because as we're growing and we're getting bigger, we're exploring crafting and the art end of play uh, much more sophisticatedly. I hope Hey Clay is on your radar. Um, this will pair with an app that will help your child learn how to create their own end result. I am not an iota artistically inclined. This would have been incredibly helpful for me as I was raising my kiddo. Okay, and lastly, we're gonna talk about magnetiles, which are one of the most cult favorite toys that exist for ages three and up. There is a ton of early education-based things that we learn through exploring magnetiles tiles, including shape recognition, color recognition, geometry, and then just the joy that is building something up and watching it fall to the ground. Magnet tiles are obviously going to use a magnetic connection to connect and to build out. So you're getting spatial awareness. It's really entry level um, basic play to explore construction, how things build in an outward or an upward direction. There's a variety of extension sets. These are a like go-to in nearly every early childhood center that exists in the world. Um, so gifting these at around three lets your child start to explore these shapes, how they fit together, how they can build them up before they may start pre-K. So definitely have these on your radar. Next up, toys from five to seven. 
And what does play look like at this age? We are talking about a kindergartner, a first or even a second grader. So at this time, we like to sneak in the learning without really like running our kids down after a school day. So you'll see a lot of what happens at ages five to seven toys are going to reinforce some of the stuff that's happening from a curriculum standpoint um, where they are academically. They are definitely confident explorers of play. They can do a lot on their own. And so we'll see a big gravitation towards science things, games, and crafts. Um, I want to talk about science first. In our previous video, we talked about magnetiles and how beneficial magnetiles are um, starting as early as age three. But the sort of like construction-based and building principles that we get from magnetiles can be sophisticated as we grow older. And even a basic magnetile set can be played for well beyond there. Um, but we're looking at the magnetiles builder set. And now we're talking about, you know, still an age three and up thing, but really at five, refining some of these more building-based, construction-based how do I work this out mathematically as I'm going upwards and outwards um, centered sets from magnetile? So this is fantastic. Um, 32B set, once again, as early as three, but I think branching out to the more complex magnetile offerings are really more in line with ages five and up. Again, keep in mind you're sort of kindergartner. Um, we've got a couple of great science options from Thames and Cosmos. Robot Pet Shop is one of my favorite products in the store. If somebody comes in and they tell me that they're shopping for a five-year-old, I am beelining for this product. It's an awesome balance between the sort of whimsical and playful end of having a pet and then some really entry-level mechanical engineering sets. It also hits a home run as far as being one set with multiple builds. So in giving this family or giving a family this as a gift or even buying it for your kiddo, we're getting a bunch of different experiments ending um, with a variety of different animals. It's eight different animals that you can build in this 107 piece set. Starts at age five, I think realistically, when you're first interacting with this, there might be some coaching or guiding. And then as we get to sort of be confident with it, five and a half, six and even into seven, we can do this on our own. Now again, we're sneaking in the education and I am of the opinion that anytime any child's given a new toy, they're learning something, but this helps us to kind of reinforce some future science-based curriculum standards just through playing like at your dining room table. This is also a great stepping into science kit um, that has within it 29 experiments. So 29 different ways that in this set your child can interact ages five and up um, with this toy. And what I love is that we're gonna get a variety of the sciences. So we get like life science and we're gonna get physics um, and some engineering based things. So a lot to you know kind of run with with one set. It's great if we can have something continue to sort of grow um, and evolve, but you will see a lot of um, toys with science-based implications that will start as early as five. We're gonna do a lot with crafting. Um, between ages five and up. And once again, I'm gonna encourage you to consider crafting, um, crafting based um, gifts and kits, regardless of um, the gender that you're shopping for. We definitely want to encourage creativity across all bounds. And there's some real left brain, right brain advantages to doing crafting based kits and exploring, you know, even science based concepts as we're there. Now, Creativity for Kids by Faber Castell has a million amazing options in their crafting kits. What's fabulous about this glow, excuse me, grow and glow dinosaur habitat is that we're getting earth science in with it. So we're able to decorate however we care to um, this sort of ceramic kind of terracotta looking base, but then we're actually going to be doing planting and growing. So you get to construct and design, and then we get the life science aspect of planting. We get to learn a lot about being patient, cause and effect, um, and craft kits nowadays, they're just, they're not what the craft kits were even when I had my, you know, 16 year old daughter at around this age. They're more multifaceted. We're gonna learn more through doing them. We have an awesome mer uh, mermaid terrarium, kind of similarly minded. They do a couple of different takes on that. Self-contained kits, again, um, exploring crafting as early as seven. Klutz is also a fabulous brand to have on your radar. They have a million uh, sort of these different activity kits that we're gonna be looking at that same five to seven age range. This is a cotton candy cart, or sorry, a candy cart, I misspoke, but there is cotton candy, just so we're checking. Um, 
But again, we're building. So while this may seem one note in terms of just being a craft focused thing, we're getting the spatial awareness of putting together the cart, what we have to do to make the cart stand, whimsical and colorful. That's a cute little item that they could also have on their desk. And we have a pizza making set. So we talked in the three to five category about kind of mirroring and copying what we see our parents doing with kind of play focused manipulatives. This pizza making set is for legitimately making pizza and includes all the sort of basic cooking manipulatives, pans that you would need for a child to make a personal sized pizza. Um, because at five, again, we are more sort of exploring our ability to do all play independently, start to finish without as much parental intervention. And we're taking things from the sort of creative and imaginative end to the real world end. Um, just a real quick on this sort of um, tag team duo of a color and a building set from Jekko, we get um, the ability to make these sort of cardboard based multi-dimensional figures, but then you also get to color them in. So we're hitting on a couple of different um, sort of development things that we're interested in between five and seven in building it together, but then being able to customize it to our own liking. Um, we also are physical and active and lots of you know youth sports really start to hit their stride at ages five and up. So we see a big leap towards more physical and outdoor and active toys at around five. If you've not heard of Stomp Rockets, I'm putting it right on your radar now. This is a foolproof backyard summertime option. Stomping on the pad, the rocket shoots into the sky. As an adult, I find that entertaining. At five, it's completely mind blowing. And as we're more active and up and mobile and um, our parents are looking for ways to burn our energy so that we can chill out. Um, Ribbon Ninja is a take on capture the flag that can be played inside or outside. You have to get your opponent's flags. You do it in as much of a sort of covert ninja -y way as you can. Um, but just to sort of put a ribbon on it, lots of five to seven play is going to fall in line with what we're learning at school and all of our physical development. Um, in a moment, we're gonna see what does play mean beyond seven because play does not stop at seven, so stay tuned tuned for our next chapter. If you've been watching this entire video, thank you so much. I hope you've been enjoying it. Mia is so fantastic. And remember, all the toys in this video is available to buy from us for Magic Beans. And our last category are toys for 7 plus. So seven to nine, we are typically in our mid to end of our elementary school career. Um, toys are either gonna reinforce some of the scientific and math-based concepts we're learning at school, or they're just gonna be silly and ridiculous, and that's completely okay. Let's start with the former, which is things that help to reinforce what we're learning at school. We've got a couple of fantastic science sets here from Mindware and from Thames and Cosmos. The structural engineering set here, if you have an inquisitive, middle elementary age child who has lots of questions about how things are made. This set is a total home run. It helps us look at the mechanical physics and the structural engineering of how buildings, bridges, all of these kind of enormous structures are made to come together. Um, talking about just a toy that like keeps on giving or a set that keeps on giving, we have 20 different experiments here that help our children at that sort of seven to nine age range. We're cognitively, we're doing such higher level thinking than we had been in previous stages. Um, explore the different ways in which structures are engineered to build up and out without toppling over. Um, Spingineer by Mindware takes us an iota forward. It's a bit more, um, in the kind of hands-on end of things, this actually has a set in it that allows a kiddo to learn to um, weld together, you know, sort of the chains and the things that help to make everything sort of spin and work together. So we're also, you know, doing some reinforcements of our dexterity and how we use our hands to explore toys. Um, obviously, we start with Lego at a much earlier age, but when we get to the seven to nine bracket of Lego, we're really closely approaching almost the adult capacity um, of Lego. So sets are going to have a much higher volume of pieces. The builds are going to be, you know, obviously an iota more sophisticated. Um, we're looking at a Star Wars set here that's ages nine and up with 586 pieces. Lego really is obviously just very addicting, but its qualities in terms of helping children understand what goes into building structures, big in some of our curriculum frameworks as we get into our later elementary ages, 
Um, it's kind of invaluable. I also wanted to pull a quick city set. Um, obviously, Lego does branded or just their traditional sets, but city is a great sort of seven-year-old set um, that also helps you to kind of just replicate what you're seeing at home. If you wanted to stay away from branded Lego sets, city or creator for ages seven and up, um, definitely worth being on your radar. Um, we definitely have some outdoor and active friendly things. This is Curveball. We have the Fobo right down below. Um, again, some leaps when we go between ages seven and nine that might lead parents to think that we're not quite playing as much. Um, but we're definitely outside. We are definitely being active. And even if you have a little one who's in basketball or soccer or football, they're doing something that's their recreational sport, supplementing with something that they can just explore and play with in a much less regimented kind of open-ended end of things is a great way to burn energy and just be a kid, right? And get out and play. Um, obviously, Fobo, we're not gonna play with that with children under three nearby um, because it's actually a fake bow and arrow. So lots of options for getting out and getting active for that age range here at Magic Beans. Another thing that happens in this like later stage of play is play gets kind of in the novelty sense of things and children are drawn to kind of kitschy, sort of impulsy things um, as far as play is concerned. And that's where our sandwich here from Jelly Cat, their full assortment of plush, lots of which do lend to the more juvenile end of stuffed animals, but they have a really broad line of these amusable based plush. As a 40 year old, I'm tempted to buy this stuffed sandwich, but there are more kind of, um, you know, not to say ridiculous, because I think there's like sort of condescending tones there, but they're just amusing. And that's their whole platform there. And children at nine or eight and nine start to just have like a natural gravitation towards things that are kind of cute and novelty in that regard. We get that reinforced with this giant meatball by Oddballs. Um, this is going to be silicone based, uh, flexible, stretchy. Our children who are in this age range are coming off of adapting to learning in the midst of a pandemic. And so there's a big push towards toys that just let them kind of chill out and do these sort of fidgety based open ended exploration without a task, without a goal to build something in mind just to kind of chill and explore something. And so not only is it Chef Mario approved, uh, but it's also just great for tactile and open ended exploration. Uh, and you're probably familiar with Crazy Aaron's Thinking Putty. They have been around for quite some time now. My daughter, who is 16, um, it was her go-to allowance purchase when she was like eight and nine years old. There's a ton of different varieties here of this sensory thinking putty. Um, there's different options. We're looking here at Magic Dragon. Um, this is Hypercolor. They're Hypercolor, just like our t-shirts in the early 90s, changed with the temperature of your hand. But there's a ton of different derivatives here. And we're approaching play and interacting with toys at this range with no pressure for our children to just have a sensory or a sort of fidgety experience as they're interacting with the toys. So keep in mind, that's gonna be big at ages seven and up. Um, we'll also have opportunity to continue our interest in crafting, but things are gonna get a little bit more sophisticated. A brand I'd like to put on your radar is Uli. They make a ton of fantastic coloring manipulatives that go well beyond the basic kind of crayon. We're looking at their silver lining um, marker set here. It has a silver metallic trim around the ends of the marker. So it's just a more unique take on coloring. Um, around seven to nine, kids also start to explore things like journaling. So having these to write uniquely um, is a big trend or a big um, thing that they're exploring, the different ways in which they can express their creativity and arming them with a bunch of different coloring manipulatives. There's a ton from Uli um, is going to really just continue to exacerbate their creativity. Um, and then we need to sophisticate things a little bit. So in a similar concept, this is a mashup paint and pastel kit. There's a couple of different varieties here that are going to include the manipulatives. They're gonna include some helpful hints at how you would, uh, or helpful instructions rather, at how you appropriately interact with these different manipulatives, which is really handy if this is the first time your child's being introduced to something like a pastel. Um, again, open-ended, a bit less guided, a bit less requiring a following a sequence of steps, which is fine because as far as play is concerned, between ages seven and nine, we're much more autonomous. We have a goal in mind for what we want to accomplish and we don't need a ton of parental intervention. So we'll just give them an, an additional item that's new to them to explore and then we sort of let them find um, their own way with it. 
Board games are gonna continue to be really popular when we're talking about ages seven to nine. Of course, things will continue to increase in their sophistication. Um, things like the gravity maze, which we have right over here, and pardon me. Um, I love to gift this for around this age range. There's different challenges that we're going to copy um, or try to mimic the grid to see how we can make this marble go from top to bottom. Obviously learning about science in the process. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, as we went through the different variety of play stages. Um, all of these toys are available at Magic Beans. You can check in with us on chat if you have a specific item in mind. Wait, 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 before you go, I hope you love this video. We have tons of other videos on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, if it's a birthday or a holiday, don't forget to shop with us for Magic Beans. We offer free gift wrap, free shipping over $99, and you get to support an independent business like ours. Thank you so much for watching. See you at the next video.